Roots of the Science podcast with your girl and with an E. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Root of the Science podcast with your girl and with an E. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. It's always so lovely to have new listeners and if you are returning Goodness me, I love, love you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in as always. A friendly reminder that you can subscribe. If you listen to this podcast on Spotify or on Apple Podcast or even Google, that you know when a new podcast comes through and make sure that you like and follow this podcast on Instagram and Twitter at the Root of the Side Pod or on Facebook at the Root of the Science Podcast. Now, let's get into today's episode. My guest today is Yannick Agbana from Togo, but currently based in Nigeria. In this episode, we learned that he did not always know that science was a route that he wanted to take, but after some consultation, he realized he wanted to become a doctor. Although that did not work out, he had however stayed in the medical field by pursuing an undergraduate degree in biomedical science in Togo. Yannick talks us through the rest of his academic journey that involves pursuing his first master's degree in China. Currently, he's pursuing his second master's, yes, number two, in medicinal plant research and drug development in Nigeria. He tells us briefly about this research and what he intends to do. Finally, we chat about the importance of researchers upskilling themselves by attending conferences and workshops and the pros and cons of this virtual world that we're currently living in. Tune in as we hear about all of this and, of course, so much more. Let's go. Hi, Yannick. Welcome to the show. Oh, and thank you very much. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you. I'm really excited to hear more about you and everything that you do. So first things first, before we get into your interview, can you just give us a brief introduction? Who is Yannick? Where are you from? Where are you currently based? And just in brief, what are you currently doing? All right. So thank you very much, Anne, uh, for this opportunity. Good. Uh, I'm from Togo. So I'm a Togolese a little country in the west part of uh, Africa. I'm a Christian and uh, I'm the first of uh, three in our family. So Yannick did uh, first his first degree in biomedical laboratory science. And I did also a, a first master's degree in biochemistry and molecular biology. And currently I'm, I'm also doing a, a master's degree the second one in medicinal plant research and drug development. Wow, that's so interesting. Thank you so much for that introduction. But, you know, I can't wait to hear more about your two masters and everything that you do. But before we get into all of that, you know, we have to get to know you away from the sciences. So you're a pretty active guy. Um, You love to play soccer. And interestingly, this part I found the most interesting is that you do some dancing, some salsa dancing. That's pretty awesome. Can you tell us more about that? All right. So, <laughs> yes, that's true. I, I play football and uh, I dance salsa. Uh, I must confess that I'm not a, like a fanatic. You know, uh, I know that uh, a lot of my friends, I mean, fanatic for the football. Uh, I just play times to times. I, I can play times to times, not like uh, every day or every particular regularly. And uh, for the salsa dance, yes, I'm passionate about uh, the salsa dance. Uh, I really like it. I started um, I started learning uh, how to dance salsa uh, when I started uh, my first degree. During my first degree, or I think by the end of my first degree, so I liked the dance since, but uh, I didn't get the opportunity to to learn. So by the end of uh, my first degree, so I I subscribed uh, in a group uh, salsa lumi. Uh, that's the, the the name of the group in my country at uh, that time. So I subscribed to uh, the group to learn the the dance actually. So wow, that's so great. Um, so does this mean that you are um, you do competitions as well, or is it just for just for fun? Of- okay, uh, thank you, Anna. I get what you mean, but uh, I might say that uh, I don't really do it for competition. 
uh, just for fun. It's just for fun. Uh, it's just for fun. Yeah, I think the dance also is um, is kind of sport. So that's it. I don't really do it for uh, like competition and all those things. But you know, when you are practicing something and uh, you get used to it, and it comes to uh, things like competition, as you mentioned. Yeah, why not? We can we can really go for it then. <laughs> That's it. All right. So Yannick, <laughs> the scientist and the salsa dancer. Ah, oh, that's something we have. To it's a pity this is not a video thing. Would have asked you to do like one two one two. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's when they are actually um, teaching the basic steps. I, I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, fantastic. No, one day when this thing goes big and it's live will bring you on and you will show us um some of those amazing. all right <laughs> all right no problem yeah okay so yannick it's been so interesting to hear you away from the sciences and your other interests but i think it's then important for us to understand um how you actually got into the science why science was it always something that you knew you were going to do or was it something that sort of developed later on in life well, um, I can't say that uh, I knew from inception that uh, I will embrace science. I cannot say that. So uh, when I was, um, I think, uh, in college, you know, in, uh, in, my, in the education system of my country, we have uh, the primary school. We have, after the primary school, we have what we call college before high school uh, and then university. So when I was uh, in high school, the last, the last class uh, of, uh, oh, sorry, not high school, I mean college, the last class of uh, college, uh, we needed to pass uh, an exam so that you can, uh, you can upgrade to a high, high school. So before that, uh, we get, uh, we got the visit of uh, one of. Uh, one of the friends of uh, my bigger brother. And um, he was that time asking me where, uh, how things were going about the exam. So I got to explain him about uh, how things were going. Then he asked me what, uh, what uh, I was intending uh, to do in high school. Because in high school, we have different, we have what we call series. So we have different series. Uh, we, you have, uh, the science series and you have the arts and later uh, later series so he was asking he was curious to know whether i'm going for science or i'm going for letters by that time i must confess i didn't really know uh, what i was going to do but i said that uh, i didn't want to uh, embrace science so at that time when you talk about science they used to uh, i mean when you talk about science you you are talking about mathematics and physics, biology and all those all those stuffs. And I say we used to hear that uh, science is difficult, is difficult. So we had that mentality yeah. that uh, science is difficult. So just based on that, uh, we were like, we don't want to embrace science and uh, we prefer to go for arts, languages and all those stuffs. Mm. So that time, and he asked me whether I know uh, what I wanted to become, mm. you know, when we are, when we are young, uh, when, when we were younger, we were small and all those stuff. Uh, our elders used to ask those kind of questions. So when I said that I wanted to embrace arts, he said, "What did I want to become?" I said, "I don't know. I don't know for now." <laughs> I said, "I don't know for now." Yeah. So he said. If you don't know what you want to, to become, uh, I advise you not to go for, for arts. It's better you go for sciences. So from that day, I made up my mind that whatever the situation, I will do sciences in high school. So that's how uh, I started um, my high school uh, doing science, I mean, for the series that I choose. So that's, that was the series CD. We call it CD in our French uh, system. So it was uh, about mathematics, physics, and biology. That's how I started doing uh, 
my first steps into science, if I can say it like that. So from that, from that, um, yeah, I I studied mathematics, physics, and biology, and all those other stuffs uh, in high school, and um, uh, I ended uh, I ended up um, even accepting to pursue um, mathematics and physics. Uh, during high school, after the first year, for the second and third year, so I did mathematics and uh, and physics. So by that time, now in uh, high school, we got to start uh, thinking about what really, what are you really passionate about? Uh, what do you want to uh, to become? What what uh, what was your passion? What what was your purpose? What do you want uh, to give people around you? All those stuff. So. Uh, that time I was, uh, I wanted to become a medical doctor. <laughs> like we all did. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to become a medical doctor. And um, so that's how we continue with uh, the, the sciences in high school. So after, after my baccalaureate, after the, the high school now, uh, for the... I mean, for the for the university for the first degrees, so somehow I ended up not going for the medical school, but I I, I still choose something that was uh, in health uh, related to health sciences, which is the biomedical laboratory science. So I think that's how I embrace uh, science. Okay. Um, yeah, no, uh, thank you so much for that. And, you know, I think most of us can relate to that sort of story where when you are trying to decide, because you're still young, you know, it's very hard to know exactly what I want. Yes. And sometimes I always say, why <laughs> exactly. do they tell like 17, 16 or 18 year olds they need to know what they're doing with their life for the next 50 years? It's great pressure. But I mean, typical, most of us, obviously, exactly. <laughs> the most African kids, we always fall into the trap of wanting to be a doctor. So it's quite interesting, you know, that many of us <laughs> can relate story. Obviously, like you said, that that didn't yeah. happen. Um, <laughs> you then decided, okay, but I, I might not be a medical doctor. I'm going to still be in the medical route. So can you talk us through that in terms of your your first degree, um, and then also journey to us up until sort of um, where you are now. So did you do your first degree um, in your home country or was it? did you go abroad to go and study as well? Well, so I did my first degree in my country, the biomedical laboratory science. I did it in my country actually. So I finished uh, my degrees that time. And uh, after that, uh, after one, Around one year, I got that scholarship for uh, my first master's degree, uh, the master's in biochemistry in the, in molecular biology, which I did uh, in China, actually in Kumi Medical University. Wow. Okay, that's so interesting. That's okay. Wow. So you went abroad to go and study in China. How long were you studying there for, and how was that experience for you coming from a French-speaking place and also, of course, your native languages, um, to now moving into this, you know, foreign culturally? It's a completely foreign place. How was that experience for you? All right. So I spent. Um... I spent three and a half years in, in China uh, because uh, actually most of the master's uh, studies, master's degree, master's program in China, most of them, I don't say uh, every master's program are like that, but most of them are for three years. Uh, three years during which you did um, at least one semester for your coursework and uh, you spend the other two and a half, I mean, two years and um, half uh, of the semester for your research uh, research purposes. So yeah, I did the uh, three years and um, half years there. Mm -hmm. And how was that experience? Yeah, uh, well, it, it was fine. It was fine. So I must confess that uh, uh, things were not necessary as uh, as we thought before we went there, but we got to adapt ourselves 
to the current situation that was uh, in place. Mm, mm, but, um, mm. We 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 got to adapt actually. We got to adapt to the situations uh, which were in place uh, there in China. But at the end, it was a very interesting uh, experience. I must con- I must also confess that uh, uh, I started developing my passion for research uh, during my master's degree in in China. Yeah, I, I must say that also. In summary, it was a very nice, it was a very nice uh, experience over there. <laughs> so, okay, well, you talk, you also talked about uh, the the language. Sure, there was a uh, that barrier. In fact, it was uh, the main, I must say, the main uh, problem of uh, most of us international students, especially those who were from. Uh, uh, French-speaking countries and all those stuff, which are not from, I mean, English-speaking countries. Yeah, so it was uh, a real challenge. And uh, you, it's also important to note that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the language that they usually use in China is uh, Chinese, as we all know. So life was a little bit uh, you know tricky for 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 us because you cannot converse, uh, converse talk with uh, people around you and that's also how we we got to learn the language our their language so that we can discuss fluently with uh, people around us so as we all know difficulties will be uh, around the corner at every stages but uh, we need to adapt uh, in every situation. Yes, of course, there are going to be yes, difficulties sir. in every single situation. And I think in most cases for international students abroad, um, there's always that. But I think you, you brought up a very good point that, for example, in China, um, you know, especially from students who are coming from a non-English speaking um, countries, it must be extra, extra hard. But kudos to, you know, for you guys for learning uh, the language. I was actually going to ask you <laughs> next, like... Did you end up learning? So I really am so impressed that you immersed yourself, um, you know, with the culture properly. And, you know, like you said, the challenges were there, but you managed to swim through it. And I'm sure it was a success. So then um, you then went on, well, currently rather, you are actually pursuing your um your second master's yes, degree and, and it's in medicinal plant research and drug development exactly. so before we get into it i'm going to ask you a very obvious question or maybe not so obvious but why another master's why not you know <laughs> <laughs> why not do the the, the 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 phd or so what made you do the second master's before you tell us more about what you're currently doing I think um, there are different reasons, you know, there are different reasons. So uh, at the end of uh, my master's degree there, uh, even before, even before the end, so I eventually applied for the PhD degrees. And because I was at ease in the lab I was working on, uh, I was working in with my supervisor, things were definitely by the end going very well between also Actually, I decided just to apply to that particular uh, university that time, uh, in my university that time. So, but actually there was a, a rule. I was in, on a, the Chinese, um, Chinese government um, scholarship. I was on that scholarship that time, but there is a rule for that scholarship actually. Uh, the rule state that I, you cannot get uh, continually Yes, um, a scholarship. Uh, I mean, if, for example, when I was doing my master's and I was on that scholarship, um, I must finish that scholarship, I must finish that program, uh, leave the country, or not ne- maybe not necessarily leave the country, but you will stop the scholarship. Uh, you go for some, like, one, one year, and then you can apply again for that uh, scholarship. But uh, because I was supported by my supervisor that time, so 
I was confident that uh, despite the rule, I will get the, the scholarship actually. <laughs> so I ended up applying for just that school. I didn't even try another schools and uh, another programs, another for the PhD. So at the end, I didn't get the, the scholarship. I didn't get the scholarship. Uh, so, but then we were graduated for uh, that time and I was still in the lab working with my supervisor that time. And then I applied, I saw this actually, yeah, I saw this program and I was interested. I was interested um, in the program. So I said, let me apply for this program first and uh, let's see what actually will happen. Because, uh, okay, so I must, I must explain that it was not uh, only the fact that I didn't get the, the scholarship, but uh, on a second thought, I actually liked and um, the, this program actually. I was interested in, uh, in the drug development uh, 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 from the natural products. As a matter of fact, my during my first degree actually i work on uh, something like that uh not necessarily drug development but i worked on a component of a, a of a natural products uh, plant based so let me put it like that because we are still working on the the paper now so uh, so i worked on uh, on a plant like that so to check some of the uh, activities so I was interested now that I, I know, yeah, uh, how to use uh, the component and, uh, you know, going around all those things. Now I was interested um, to know how to, to, to get the component from the raw materials and how to follow the, the drug development uh, pipeline and at the end get a drug. So when I saw the program, this, uh, this current program I'm doing, I was interested. I was like, ah, okay, I can actually uh, go to that place and learn about all those stuff. So that's how I get to start this uh, program. I think it's also very important that you brought it up that there were some of these things, these challenges that were sort of beyond your control. Um, as much as you might have wanted to stay um, and to do your PhD, et cetera. But you know, some of these things, some of these things happen for a reason. So now tell yeah. us more of an overview of what exactly you're doing currently now, and also just why is it so important? Actually, right now, <laughs> I must say, uh, with my supervisor, actually, we are um, we are still working on. Um, I mean, to develop uh, the 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 research uh, we are gonna work in work on. And uh, but I can give yeah the overview and explain a little bit uh, what we are trying to do, what we want to do actually. So, yeah. all right. <laughs> So uh, actually, uh, with my supervisor, we we want to investigate some activity, uh, uh, namely anti-cancer activity, different uh, selected plants from a particular uh, family of plants, Vebenase. So we will select uh, those plants, we will extract, we will do some extractions, and actually we are we are interested in the in what we call a uh, peptide. So we want to extract those peptides from the plant, the selected plants, and then we will eventually study, investigate uh, the anti-cancer effects of those peptides. We want to see whether or not those peptides can actually uh, impede the growth of, um, uh, of cancer cells. So that's... that's uh, in summary, what we are trying to do, actually. Okay. Um, Yannick, for somebody who is unfamiliar, what are peptides? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, peptides are a fragment of proteins. <laughs> Let me put it like this. So yeah, we know that in the plant, we have different components. We have uh, different components. Let me put it like that. 
not saying metabolites. And um, so uh, those peptides actually are um, one of those uh, components. So we are interested in those uh, in that particular component of um, of the plant that uh, have actually they have shown some um, activities, very good activities uh, in terms of uh, um, anti-cancer properties and uh, different other properties, uh, medicinal properties actually. So we are interested in that uh, in those uh, actually component does. Um, that's what I can say about it. Mm. No, I no. Thank you so much for that uh, breakdown. It's 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 still quite interesting. And I think, like you said, that you are still sort of developing this concept. But it's a very exciting concept, you know, in this time. Um. So just to give everybody an overview, you are now you are now based in Nigeria, right? Where you're doing your 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 masters yes exactly so i'm based in nigeria uh in university of ibadan uh, but i mainly belongs to pan-african university life and earth sciences uh, institutes so let me yeah so let, i will take this opportunity to to talk a, a little bit about the Pan-African university for those my, uh, maybe who uh, don't know about the university so uh, Pan African University is uh, the university. Uh, I mean, installed by the African Union. Uh, they have different institutes around the globe. Uh, I mean, around uh, Africa. Sorry, around Africa. Uh, we have uh, one in Nigeria here. That's Paulesi, uh, which stands for the Pan African University Life and uh, Life and Earth Sciences Institute. We have one in Kenya, that's Posti. We have one in Algeria, a one in Cameroon, and the other one in um, South Africa, but which uh, has not launched for now. Wow, that's so interesting to know that this university existed. Okay, so how it works is that it's like you said that it's 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 done by the African Union, but then. Um, you have host universities that host the, the, the students. It doesn't have its own official building? Yes, actually, um, the different institutes are hosted by different uh, renowned universities in the, those different countries. Uh, as I said, for Paulesi, uh, it's hosted by University of uh, Ibadan. But they are, it's not like they are dependent uh, I mean, on University of Ibadan, they have their institute, they have their administration and all those stuff, you know, right? That's the same for, for example, the, the institute in um, Kenya, POSTI. So POSTI is hosted by the uh, Tomo Kenyatan uh, University of Agriculture and Techno Technology. Uh, the one in Algeria, if I'm right, is hosted by the one university uh, in Tem Temlek or something like that. So those different universities, uh, I mean, institutes are hosted by different uh, universities, but they are working independently. That is so brilliant. And I'm learning something new today. And what a what a lovely vision um, of, of, I'm sure what the vision was to have this Pan-African <laughs> um, university across the different countries and like you said at these very prestigious institutions at yes. in the, in these countries so um wow what a what a what a an honor i think for you to be part of part of such yes sure yeah yeah you're right i i think it's um a very great honor to be part of a uh, this program this institute and all those stuff yeah, you know no, <laughs> and just to also speak more on that Yannick you are actually involved in terms of you know upskilling yourself and doing various conferences and courses etc um 
so I wanted to ask you, it's a, it's a two, it's a two part question rather. So my question is, why do you think this is so important for uh, scientists to, to, um, to do these sorts of things, to do conferences, to attend these workshops and, you know, um, all of these things. Okay. Maybe let's start there and I'll ask you my second question. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I, I think is uh, obviously important uh, to participate in all those conferences and workshops. So I will just take my example and try to explain it. So for me, anytime that, uh, okay, first of all, for the workshops, uh, I usually go to learn. Obviously, I, I used to go to learn. I used to go to upgrade myself uh, you, and all those stuff. For the conferences, when you go, and um, uh, you, you try to you try to learn about um, from different people, from the the scientists around around the globe, if I can say put it like that. So you you they are important. They are there. They are sources of uh, of if I can say it like that. They are sources of resources. Uh, you resource yourself. You you learn new things. Uh, you get uh, new insights from people. There are actually uh what happened what uh, also happened used to happen uh usually is that there are several research going on around around the globe that are not necessarily published yet and you don't you don't know about them but at the conferences the mm -hmm. uh, scientists used to expose what they are working on currently and you get to you will get to learn about what's really going on uh, even if those research are not published yet. And even, I must also add that from those conferences, you get new ideas. You might even get new ideas for your, for your own research you are doing now. You might get some research gap from different presentations. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Apart from just gaining new ideas and learning what's there, the most obvious thing is creating those networks with different people. Hey, where you're able to meet so and so from this university or from this uh, research institute, etc. Or maybe even your future boss <laughs> when you finish your degree. So um, these conferences or workshops have now obviously gone virtual. Um, I'm going to ask you a very, like, it might be controversial, but do you like the virtual sessions? Of course, it made it easier for everybody to, 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 to network. Or do you, do you miss the, the in-person nature of these conferences? Well, uh, I, must, uh, I might say that... Uh... It has its pros and cons, actually. I, I think so. For me, for me, I prefer to uh, I prefer physical meetings where I can interact directly with uh, with people. Yeah, I think I, I prefer that. But uh, the online conferences and all those stuff, I think uh, they are also very good. Uh, they are even economic. <laughs> If I can say so, and um, yeah, okay. So some people also explain it the advantage uh, by giving reasons like uh, for some people that are uh, somehow shy, uh, it also helps them to express themselves uh, easily. In, yeah, easily uh, and express their. I mean, show their research. And without feeling compromised uh, by the public uh, and all those stuff, but my take is uh, I still prefer the the physical meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm yes. there with you. I, I understand that you said that. We know, we all understand the pros and cons. I mean, rather the the pros of the um, digital side, but yeah. Uh, the, the, the physicality of it is obviously always really, really nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's so many 
other pros of of that as well. So Yannick, it's been we've been having a really great chat, and you know, it's as as we can see, time is flying. You've given us sort of an overview of what you're currently doing, where you've come from, even your journeys abroad and your interactions, like upskilling yourself, et cetera. So I just wanted to ask you, as we are wrapping up, what are some of your final words um, of, you know, some of advice that you can give to somebody who aspires to, to, to follow in your footsteps, be it in science generally, or just in life as a whole and some of, some of the life lessons that you've learned so far? All right. Uh, thank you, Anne. Well, uh, as I said before, uh, my advice would be, uh, I think the problem we used to have is when we encounter uh, different obstacles uh, in our life, in our daily life, in everything we are doing and all. So my, as I said before, my advice would be to to accept challenges, to accept challenges. And every time that we have any kind of challenge, um, our aim should be uh, to overcome to those those challenges to to adapt uh, not giving up uh, to give up it should not be a, an option so and for anyone who is interested in the stems uh, i think the stem is uh, the stems are, are there and uh, they are open for everyone and we we might not uh, have that idea of stems is uh, or stems are uh, difficult stuff uh, and all those things uh, I used to say around me that there is nothing difficult or better, everything is difficult, but uh, it depends on uh, the angle you, 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 you take it from and um, you're, you're willing to overcome whatever difficulty you are facing. Yes, so, so that, that's it. So I really encourage uh, anyone um, that are um, interested in pursuing uh, STEM to 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 take it easy, take it easy and uh, embrace embrace it. But I think the uh, I must I must also mention that the most important things is to to follow our passion, to follow our passion. Yeah, as as it it is said, uh, whenever we are doing what we love. Uh, is no more a burden for us, but it becomes, uh, yeah, a joy, everyday joy. So everyone is in really encouraged. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for those um, words of advice. I think you you have inspired us and you have motivated. And I hope that whoever's listening, somebody can take those words and apply it um, into their own lives. And even if somebody is aspiring to get into STEM, they can take heed of that advice and you know apply it. So thank you. And also just a big thank you for coming onto the show and for sharing your journey. I really had a great time. Um, chatting with you today. Thank you very much, uh, Anne. It's also my pleasure to to be here uh, with you and uh, everyone that will be following us. And uh, I also really enjoy chatting and sharing uh, all those stuff with uh, with you guys. Thank you very much, Anne. And I really, I really like uh, what you are doing, the work you are doing. And uh, I think by, by hearing from people. Uh, on your podcast, we are really getting a lot of things. We are really learning and uh, really kudos for what you are doing. And thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's honestly a pleasure for you to, to, um, to have this conversation with you. And also, it's always really the best thing for me is hearing from all of you. And uh, with that being said, um, also the best thing is for everybody listening. So thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in to today's episode. Um, until next time, it's your girl, Anne with an E. Goodbye. Bye.